I've become something that I don't really like, and I want to talk about that. All right, how are we going so far? We've got opening sigh, check, sad music, check, and melodramatic thumbnail and title and opening statement, check. So I've ticked those things off. Now you should be primed and ready to watch a video of me opening up and being vulnerable on YouTube. And buckle up. There's a lot to talk about, so I don't want to bore you or drag you through anything you're not particularly tuning into this video for, so I'm just going to make it really straightforward and compartmentalize it for you. I'm dividing this video into sections you can see down in the time bar or the time codes in the description. You can skip ahead at any point. Okay. Let's do this. So my channel's going through what I feel is a bit of an identity crisis that I've gone through before. And over many years on YouTube, it's pretty common because the platform changes and you have to evolve your content. What's a little different this time is I've been adapting and trying different things. And sometimes I've been changing the content fairly drastically and then changing it again without explanation, basically, because I'm trying to figure stuff out. And if I keep doing it without actually talking to you about it, then I'm probably just going to frustrate more people. And rather than and look for it alone or not talking to you about that searching process, I, I thought I'd open up to you guys because look, I've been doing this for eight years and many of you have been here for a long time and through a lot of changes and I owe it to you to be open about it. Now to add a massive dose of self-reflection and self-consciousness to this process, a few days ago in one of my random nightly Reddit scroll crawl things, I came across a meme. It was on the homepage of Reddit with now over 145,000 likes with the meme being me building up the courage to unsubscribe from a YouTuber who have watched grow and progressively become more annoying. So yeah, decent meme. I, I snickered and then went in to read the comments and lo and behold, in a comment with over 2,500 upvotes, it says, sad to say it, but Jazza, he used to do awesome character design sessions and have really good art advice on his channel. These days, it seems like all reaction videos and art challenges. Now in the grand scheme of things, I could ignore that. I have over 5 million subscribers. My channel is not struggling for views. Things are going pretty well in the grand scheme of things, but where in the past I might see something like this and happily disregard it because normally I don't agree. In this case, I kind of do. So I'm going to backtrack. Let's start off with a bit of a history lesson. I'll keep it brief. How I got here. So I'm going to divide the, the progression of my channel into phases, kind of like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So we start off with Jazza Phase 1. This channel was formerly Draw with Jazza and started off with the intention from day one to become my job. I saw YouTube was growing and I saw a big gap in art content, specifically tutorials for drawing and animation. I filled that gap. Art and animation tutorials. I had a thing. I was the guy who taught you how to draw, how to animate, how to have fun with art, no matter your skill level. And that was a cool guy to be. So I did the tutorial thing and I taught everything that I knew how to share, often multiple times because I revisited the same things I felt qualified to share. But if there's anything I suck at doing, it's the same thing for too long. And I was bored of tutorials and I was really falling in love with performing and improvising. So enter Jazza Phase 2. In Phase 2, I did a lot more streaming and a lot of improvising and, and uh, random prompts and, and some art challenges here and there. In particular, uh, I started doing a thing called a character design session, which gained a lot of traction and, and a lot of people enjoyed. I had a thing again, and it was a thing for a while, but I did start to get bored. I <laughs> couldn't just keep doing the same thing because I was feeling complacent and I wanted to do new and bigger things, which then led me on to Jazza Phase 3. And just like the Marvel Cinematic Universe, this is where everything really came together. The, even the budget increased, the intensity of videos increased, the set and production got bigger. I was the goofy art guy who'd do anything big or small. I was the guy who could make art seem both impossible and accessible at the same time. And whether it was something you could see yourself doing or not, it didn't matter because we were just having a try and having fun and, and playing around with art and creativity. And that continued until I even changed the name of my channel from Draw with Jazza to Jazza and I could do anything I wanted, not just drawing, but sculpture and VR and miniatures and music, you name it. If it's creative, I'll give it a go. So I think really where I'm hitting this dissonance is in figuring out phase four, because for the most part, a lot of those core concepts have been heavily explored and aren't as surprising or delightful as they used to be, and yet feel like something I need to return to until I figure out what is the next thing. So I've been trying to figure out what my phase four looks like, and I'll get to that in a moment, but it's in this place of trying to figure out what my current flavor and future direction is that I feel like I've lost a, a little bit of my own sort of uh, sense of confidence and some of your trust as viewers. And in particular, I want to address three things that came up in the 
hundreds of comments under that Reddit post comment about me. One, his content has become annoying. Two, his content has become for children. And three, it's all clickbait art challenges. So criticism one, getting annoying. To contextualize this, first of all, I thought my phase four was going to be like phase three, but bigger. So like art challenges and, and trying new things, but but wackier and louder. And it's, it's, yeah, it's a running joke on my channel that I'm obnoxious but consistent, but I feel like in leaning into that, I've become consistently too obnoxious and it's just a bit grating and I get it. The point is I think it's this over amplification, over obnoxiousness that potentially has isolated or pushed away uh, people who have been through phases one and two and even three and maybe not so much for younger audiences who may not feel pushed away by that, which brings me to criticism too. His content is for kids now. Now let's be clear, if my channel became a kids channel, that would not be a bad thing if it were my choice. Building a young audience and introducing a new generation to art and creativity is definitely a good thing, but I'm really proud of the community I've built in those first three phases, especially the people who have been here and been a part of seeing this channel grow. I better be pretty damn sure of who I'm providing content to. So if I'm gonna be honest in trying to figure that out and being semi-conscious of it, but also sort of following a lot of unconscious impulses, my channel sort of flailed wildly in flavor a bit. In some videos, I've got bright colors and goofy bright merch and silly loud antics. But on top of that, the bigger my channel's grown, the more familiar I've become with how many children watch my videos. Not that I've made the content for children, but that just by virtue of growing, there are more young eyes on my content. So while I may not think of my channel as a children's channel, I can see why this is a criticism and something that some people have felt. And it's something I'll talk about a little towards the end of this video. And the third criticism, that it's all clickbaity art challenges. There's a lot to unpack in this one. I think the simplest place to start is with an analogy I saw on the Veritasium YouTube channel talking about video virality and the YouTube algorithm. Basically sort of really nicely explaining the relationship between creators and their audiences with the algorithm being the thing between us. YouTube claims that they have this algorithm, which you can think of like the brain of the platform. The algorithm you can think of as following the audience. The, the algorithm is, is, is chasing this audience around and trying to uh, reach them. Now, what YouTube doesn't much consider is that, well, the YouTube creators use their content to try to uh, chase the algorithm. And so there's a way in which the content is chasing the algorithm, the algorithm is chasing the audience. And if the content actually manages to catch up with the algorithm, you get a, a kind of perverse situation in which the algorithm is the content. YouTube would love to believe that, that creators don't care about the algorithm, but they do. It's like the core aspect of uh, how creators decide what content to make. I'll link to that whole video in the description. It's really well worth watching if you wanna understand some of the perspectives that we creators deal with in this sort of situation. But as creators, we want to both make content that gets views because it means you're watching and we're reaching new people and make content we care about and you like. And this is the game that many YouTubers are in and there are three common ways to sort of approach content creation. One is more simplicity driven content. Reaction content, community and Reddit based content. There was a time not too long ago where I thought, okay, I'm gonna double down on this. Maybe this is the thing. And it was just disappointing for you and me. I need to, to make stuff. And I think you wanna see me make stuff. And the second approach to content creation is the clickbaity style, the sensationalist concept driven content approach. Making stuff that you know produces results and sticking to that. And some people find something that works and they keep doing it and good on them. But I personally struggle to bring myself to repeat the same thing too many times. So I'm not great at sticking to one of those first two concepts. So the third is more creativity and passion driven content. The more ambitious stuff, the more stuff that matters to you as an artist, it may do well, it may not, but really the result and the thing you made is something you're really proud of that you worked really hard to make. This is my favorite kind of content, but it's the hardest kind of content because I can't do it without finding a way to make it 
clickable. So I think it's my blessing and my curse that I try and do all three and it's a really hard thing to balance and I think the point of this video is I've been getting that balance wrong and I want to talk to you about it. I need to lay things out a bit. Alright, I'm going to draw for you a sexy Venn diagram. I think the way I've been prioritizing this is I've been first and foremost prioritizing clicky, passion-driven videos. They are not simple, they are exhausting. So then as I get exhausted, I tend to simplify and I try and keep it things I care about and things that you'll click on. And then in the end, inevitably exhausted and somewhat disappointed by the results of one, I end up somewhere here where the concepts are centered mostly on simplicity and they might be somewhat clickable, but really I just need to recuperate. And laying it all out like this and just addressing this is helpful for me to realize that really what I need to do is first and foremost, strike the balance. Things I care about, things that you wanna see, and things that are simple enough for me to have something sustainable. Then I think this should be number two. Because at the end of the day, I really do care about doing big stuff. I like the challenge of tackling more than I should and doing things that haven't been done but I need to do that as less of a priority and less regularly than I've attempted. And then I think my number three needs to be right here, which is a little difficult to, to sort of do on a platform that does not like you pulling away from this circle in the Venn diagram. But at the end of the day, if I keep putting the algorithm first to the detriment of the people who really make this channel what it is, then that's a bad direction and I don't want to do that. All right, there you go. That's my di that's my diagram for this video. So who am I now and who do I want to be? I've gotten stuck in this cycle of what feels like compromises and exhaustion and obnoxiousness and I've probably wasted too much energy on how I present the videos and I probably just need to chill out a bit. So I could do this all without doing this video. I could make this decision to get in the driver's seat and do the thing. The problem is I have tried to do that a number of ways which haven't worked out, but also I think just seeing that Reddit post and those comments really has made me realize I, need, I owe it to the people who cared enough in the past and it hurts them to feel like they have to let something go that mattered to them because I've changed or the channel's changed because that is where they think I want to be or have chosen to be. But I really wanted to just start that conversation and invite some of you guys back and just say uh, really loud and clear in this video who I know I am, what I know I want my content to be. And I may not get there immediately or be perfect at it, but if there's something I know you can rely on me for, it's that even though I may not always get it right, sometimes for extended periods of time, I will always try. And I want to talk about that now. By addressing those three wonderfully bit of painful but fairly reasonable things. First, I'm annoying. I annoy myself. I want to find the sweet spot to be an authentic me. I don't want to end up in places where I force myself into a frantic energy if I'm not bursting with it on the day because I feel like that's what you've come to expect or what the content needs to be to keep people watching. I want to be myself to the extent that if I face the criticism of being annoying in the future, it wouldn't matter to me in the same way it didn't matter in the past because I knew I was just doing exactly what I do. So I guess what I'm saying is I acknowledge that I've not really been doing that. Two, his content is for kids. I'll try and keep it simple. I want this channel to be a channel for everyone. I don't want to be immature and goofy to the point of making adults cringe, but on the other hand, I can't promise parents I'll be squeaky clean and a a perfect example because I'm just not sometimes. <laughs> this never was a kid's channel and I, I never made a conscious decision for it to be a kid's channel and if I gave the impression that this is a children's channel then that's my bad but at the same time <laughs> don't don't get the idea that I'm not gonna be inappropriate in videos because sometimes I am. It just can't help it but I need to give myself permission to just do what I would do and that's the way to do it. That's the way I should have always done. Third, it's all clickbait art challenges. I think in short, I want you to click on my videos, but I want you to want to watch them. So what I need to do is be willing to reduce my output somewhat so I don't take the pressure on to put out content to the point where to some people who click on videos, it feels like the promises I make in a thumbnail and title are not fulfilled, therefore feeling like crappy clickbait. As well as give myself permission to be 
a little more straightforward. I think uh, I, I've seen myself as the, the wacky, unknown art materials, art challenge, do anything guide to the point where, because I've done so much, I have to go to greater and greater extremes to still be that. And it's getting less surprising and satisfying for you. And it's getting <laughs> a lot more work and stress for me. Sometimes it's amazing and it, and it is exactly everything I, I wanted it to be and you wanted it to be, but also I'm, I'm missing more than I'd like to in the hit and miss game. So I need to adjust that. I need to take off the pressure from myself of feeling like every video needs to be some big production. So that's my direct addressing of those criticisms that I kind of agree with. I don't have exact answers for, but I can basically tell you I want to hit the reset button and just do more me. I'm not going to do tutorials and character design sessions unless I want to. And there's a way to figure out how to get people to watch it. Because at the end of the day, if I just do that, even if I want to do it, but no one clicks on it, then that's, that's how YouTube lets channels die. At the end of the day, I'm a performer and I like performing to crowds. That's just part of me. That's an authentic part of me. It is not to do with views or money or anything like that. It's to do with being a performer and loving uh, reaching people. That is something I'm passionate about, but I want to do it in the right way, uh, in a way that feels right to you and is fun and, and exciting for me as well. So in answer to that question, who do I want to be? Uh, it's not a type of content. And if that's what you subscribed for, and I don't do a certain type of content anymore, I might do it again, and I might never do it again. I, as a creative, cannot just be bound to one type of thing. It's just not who I am. But what I am is an explorer uh, and someone who likes uh, trying things and being surprised by things. Sometimes simple things, sometimes big things. But more than anything, I, I like things that surprise and delight me and I want to bring those things to you uh, in a way that we all love. So I'm going to keep doing that and, and just redouble my focus on that and hit the reset button on the pressure I put on myself and <laughs> the flavour I have become but find the flavour I am. Uh, which brings me to the final part of this video my plan to turn the problem of discovering what phase four is into an opportunity of discovering phase four together. I don't want to be Captain Marvel 2 or Ant-Man 3. And I think I was going in that direction, let's be honest. No one wants to see Ant-Man 3. People are tired of superhero movies, especially since the glory days of superhero movies has certainly come and gone. The problem is, as YouTube is a constantly evolving platform, and because I refuse to stick to doing one thing, I have to constantly figure out the next step as I go. I guess what I'm trying to get at is uh, I've gone through this channel identity crisis thing before. This is not the first time and I've always come out on the other side and been confident in the direction that I've gone in. Tutorials have been my thing. They are no longer my thing. Character design sessions were my thing. They are no longer my thing. Art challenges have been my thing. I guess I, I feel like I can acknowledge that I've been amplifying my performances and content. I mean, perhaps it's that now that I'm in a bigger space and there are lots more people working on my videos and lots more people watching my videos and lots more competition on the platform, there's just a heightened sense of pressure and a lot more space I feel like I need to fill with personality and antics and big ambitious concepts, but I think maybe I just need to take it easy on myself and chill out a bit more with you guys. So I'm gonna let go of holding into being the wacky zany, bigger than, larger than life, every concept and every challenge ever art guy uh, as being my thing, where my thing can be uh, being honest and sharing me with you. And I can care about what you wanna see and care about the things I make while we both explore uncharted artistic territory. So how about it? Will, we, will you let me be your thing? <laughs> Let's be each other's thing. Can you come thing with me? Do you hear the people thing? So in conclusion, the point of this video is to, to talk to people who feel like my flavor has changed in a way you're not particularly happy with. Cause I just wanted to say I kind of agree. And I sincerely hope that those of you who have found a lot of joy in my content, who can vibe with what I'm saying in this video, stick around a bit because I'm not going to stop making stuff. That's never going to happen. I am incapable of stopping making stuff. I will hit speed bumps. There will be ebbs and flows. There will be misdirection and I will nail it. I'll do all of that. But I promise you, I'm going to try harder to make sure I'm doing right by you and by me. And I appreciate you watching this goddamn very long video about me talking about my crap. 
when you've got your own stuff to worry about. Man, 2020, ha! Let me know what you think in the comments of this video because I will read and pay attention and I really do care. Hopefully, I'll see you around. Otherwise, thanks for watching.